Hello everybody and welcome to Know for A Level or Know for GCSE. This is the second video of the Electricity series. Disclaimer that this video is applicable for both GCSE and A Level Physics students. Some concepts will be just for A Levels and I will tell them, I will make sure I mention them. So this is the contents of the video. Um, an exam tip is to use these questions as active recall prompts for your exams, but there will also be timestamps if you have a specific question that needs answering. I'm going to try and go through each of the concepts step by step so that you can understand this no matter your physics background. I recommend you watch the previous video just for an understanding of current voltage resistance, EMF and internal resistance. What is a series circuit? A series circuit is a circuit where all of the components are connected end to end. In other words, it's just one massive loop. Now, you need to be able to know the current, the potential difference and the resistance all in a series circuit. So let's begin. In a series circuit, there's only one path for all of the electrons to flow. There's only one path for the charge to flow, and therefore there's only one path for a current to flow. Therefore, the same current is going to flow through all the components. If you think about it, the electrons have nowhere else to go. Therefore, they can only travel that way. It can be explained by the conservation of charge principle. Now, the conservation of charge principle states that charge cannot be created or destroyed. Charge is always conserved. Now, if you apply the conservation of charge to Kirchhoff's first law, Kirchhoff's first law is that the total current flowing into a junction must equal the total current flowing out of that junction. And that's because there's nowhere else for the currents to flow or nowhere else for the charge to go. Therefore, in this diagram here, you can see that I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3, conservation of charge. And therefore, in the series circuit, since there's only one place for the current to go, there's no other branches, it must be the same everywhere in the circuit. Now looking at the potential difference. Since we know that the current is the same, we've got the same flow of electrons. We then know that the potential difference is shared across the components according to their relative resistances. So as a ratio of each of the components resistance, that's how the voltage is shared out between them. And this is because the energy carried by those same electrons gets used up as they pass through the component. For example, if the power supply was 6 volts, then it could be 6 volts at the beginning here. Resistor 1 could use up 2 volts, 2 joules of energy per coulomb of charge. Resistor 2 could use up 3 volts, and that means that you only have 1 volt left for this third resistor. And say if this took up three, 1 volt, then in the end you have 0 volts, and you have 6 volts at the beginning. Therefore, there's a potential difference. So it gets used up and that's why the voltage is different and it's settled as a ratio of each component's resistance. Now this actually comes from the conservation of energy principle. So the conservation of energy is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy is always conserved. Therefore, Kirchhoff came up with an application of the conservation of energy and suggested that since potential difference is defined, as you can see in this triangle here, as the difference in energy over a component per coulomb of charge, so it's talking, it's got energy in its formula, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Therefore, the sum of all of the voltages across the components which supply the electrical energy must equal the sum of all of the voltages across the components in the same loop. So Kirchhoff's second law, in other words, is suggesting that the potential difference of the power supply must equal the sum of the potential difference of all of the other components in that loop. And finally, resistance. So the total resistance in a series circuit is just going to be the sum of the resistances of each individual component. If you're an A-level physics student, you need to know how to derive this conclusion. So let's look through that now. Imagine there is this circuit here. 
you've got two resistors and your power supply. The two resistors have resistance one for the first one and resistance two for the second one. Let's say that the first resistor also has current I1 and voltage V1. Then the second one is going to have current I2 and voltage V2. Remember, this is a proof, so it's kind of like we're replacing these with algebra. Now, the current and voltage of the power supply is going to be the total current, hence IT, and the total voltage, hence VT. Now, we know that the total voltage in a series circuit is going to be the, to the, the total voltage of the power supply must be equal to the sum of the voltages of the components. Hence, Vt is equal to V1 plus V2. Now, in other words, Vt is also equal to, because of the formula V is equal to IR, Vt is also equal to current, the total current times by the total resistance. And therefore, V1 can be written as current 1 times resistance 1, and V2 can be written as current 2 times resistance 2. Therefore, the total voltage is going to be V1 plus V2, as we said, and therefore, by substituting those values in, the total voltage is equal to current 1 resistance 1 plus current 2 resistance 2. And therefore, we know that it will be current total times by resistance total if we're equating both sides. But what do we know about the current in a series circuit? We know that current in series circuits are the same value everywhere. Therefore, the total current is going to equal current 1, and that's also going to equal current 2. So using that, using the fact that all of the currents are the same, you can then say that the total current times by the total resistance is equal to the total current times by resistance 1 plus resistance 2. Therefore, the total resistance is equal to the sum of the resistances. So that's the proof for this series. Now later on, later on in the video, we'll talk about the proof for parallel. So let's look at a parallel circuit. Parallel circuits are different compared to series in the fact that they are connected across each other in loops or branches. So the current is splitting effectively. This is a really helpful animation and I just want to talk through it because it really does really well express the key ideas here. So hopefully you can see that these moving electrons are changing color. And you can see by the key on the right hand side that the change in color is supposed to represent the electrical potential energy and how it's losing that energy as it's going through the components. So you can see that initially it's red, it's maximum energy in, in the power supply here. Then it goes through, it splits at the branches, still not used up yet. Then once it goes through the components, you can see that they're turning into a blue color their energy is being used up as the resistances are using their energy and then what's happening is at this point their minimum energy they're blue so say if this is six volts maximum energy and zero volts minimum energy there is a potential difference there's a difference in energy in terms of the electrons and therefore the power supply is supplying that emf Remember, EMF is the electrical energy supplied per unit charge. That's the A-level concept. So it's, it's refueling it. So this is a really good understanding. So the current is splitting at the branches here and supplying its energy and then rejoining. So now using that and our understanding, we can then find current potential difference and resistance. And it's using the same applications of the conservation of charge and Kirchhoff's first law for current. So we know that the total current of the power supply must equal the sum of currents at each branch. And we know current splits at each branch. Now, how does it split? Well, it splits on a basis of the ratio of the resistance. And we can say the similar thing for potential difference. So potential difference will be split depending on um, using Kirchhoff's second law, which is that the sum of all of the components in a branch is going to equal the sum of the potential difference of the power supply. So basically, the potential difference at each branch is going to be the same. 
And why is that? Because the potential difference at any two points must be the same. Here, here, the potential difference is the same for the first loop, and that must be the same for the second loop at the same time. And looking at resistance, the sum of the resistance is actually 1 over 1 plus R1 plus 1 plus R2 plus how many resistances there are. So how do we get to that equation? A-level physicists, let's look at deriving that now. So in order to derive the above formula, we need to think about a series circuit. So in this series circuit, you've got three resistors and each of these three resistors have three different resistances. Resistance 1, resistance 2 and resistance 3. Look at this diagram here and that represents it all. So you can see how they are in parallel. Now due to Kirchhoff's second law, which is talking about how potential difference at each branch must be the same as potential difference of the power supply, we know that the potential difference must be the same as the supply voltage. And using that, as well as Ohm's law, we can then write three different equations for the current across each resistor. So in I hope you noticed that in the first proof we did, looking at the series circuit, we used the fact that the current is the same. In this proof, we're using the fact that in parallel circuits in the branches, the potential difference is the same. So therefore, current 1, using V is equal to IR, is equal to voltage over resistance 1. Current 2 is equal to voltage over resistance 2. And current 3 is equal to voltage over resistance 3. The voltages are the same in each one. Now, due to the conservation of charge, the sum of these individual currents must be equal to the overall current, as we said, because current splits at the branches. Therefore, I is equal to IT is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. You can then replace each of these individual currents using the equation. So we know that I1 is equal to V over R1. So you're just dragging it from the top and putting it in there. And the same thing with I2 and the same thing with I3. Now that equation can then be rearranged. So we know that the voltage is the same. So you can factor that out. And you just get that current is equal to V brackets 1 of R1 plus 1 of R2 plus 1 of R3. And we know that current divided by voltage is equal to the resistance, and therefore the resistance equals that, equals one of the resistance, sorry. So that's how you get that value. Now, a key thing to know about series versus parallel is that in series circuits, if there's any failure, that causes the entire circuit to not work. Whereas with parallel, if one component was to fail, that does not affect the other components. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found value from this video and liked the way I explained things. If you did find it helpful, then I'm expanding the subject range and we're doing many more A-levels. And if you know any younger siblings or other people who are doing their GCSEs, feel free to recommend me to them as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and see you soon.